Hey guys, Tobin with TroutSupport.com here. Just want to do a real quick hook shaping seminar with you on how to shape an extra wide gap swim bait hook to use with my new lure, the TroutSupport.com lure. It's a weedless, walking, slow sink twitch bait for fishing high grass situations, whether you're fishing in the marsh or shallow oyster or anywhere there's floating grass. So let's get to it. You need a couple things here. You need a really good pair of needle nose pliers. And let's just start with that. What I've been doing that I found is the most successful. This is a Trocar EWG 5 aught swim bait hook. And what you've got to do is actually shape these hooks just a little bit. I'm using the pliers and I'm coming right behind the barb of the hook and putting the hook in the palm of my hand like this, holding really tight with your right hand on the hook, on the uh, point of the hook, and then bending that close down a little bit. And what you want to do is you want to bend that hook point to where it lines up with the eye, with the eye of the hook. So right now this one's still a little too open. So we're going to continue to close the gap. We're closing the gap of that swim bait hook, and I'll show you why in just a second. Now you can see on this one already, I've been in a little too far. It's a little too aggressive, and it's now pointing right there, um, just right at the base of the eye. I'm gonna open that back to what I like is getting it right to the center of the eye. And we'll test this. You can use a ruler, you can use a popsicle stick, you know, whatever. See how it goes right to the center of the eye right there, or right to the top of the eye. Grab one of our new trout support lures. I specifically weighted these baits and specifically designed the hook slot so that it cast really well for a weightless rigged bait. This is a trocar, it's got a spring keeper, and you want to stick with the spring keepers as much as possible. We're going to start that spring keeper with the spring point on the bottom, and just push towards the point, towards the eye of the hook as you screw it on. And I like to go and get that keeper to where it gets pretty close to that to that hook point, to that eye of that hook. Get it up there nice and slug, right about like that. The best way to get the right position on this is go ahead and put the hook into the hook slot. Open that girl up with your thumb a little bit. I like to, I like to find a flake or something to use as a go by. I'm looking right here where my thumb is right in that area where it's going to be the end of that bait. Turning it aggressively and then poking it through until my finger feels the point coming through and push it up. Okay, now you see how that hook is lined up with that bait. You can actually fish it in light grass just like that without skinning the hook and it's not going to get a whole lot of grass. If you're in a bunch of heavy floating grass, I'm gonna go ahead and push it forward and just barely skin the point of that hook. This is the hook that I caught my eight pounder on in trout and bass in this past spring. And I probably had the best hookup ratio with this hook after I've shaped it. I'm terming this action that we're doing, I'm calling it shaping an EWG. You gotta shape that EWG to make it hook right and to have the best weedless protection as well as the best hookup ratio. I also did a lot of stuff to um, make sure the plastic was tough, but also uh, soft enough to where it maximized the hookup ratio as well. So that's the Trocar EWG. You can do this with a lot of different swim bait hooks. This is the Gamagatsu Superline hook. It's also just barely open. You know, here's your raw, your raw gamey swim bait hook and it's coming in just a little bit high of the eye. You can grab my pliers, grab my needle nose, put the hook in the palm, 
I take no responsibility if anybody gets a super line hook in their palm <laughs> and just shape it shape it make that hook do what you need it to do and I'm not going to show you that one but it, it should be uh, it should be lined up just about right right now if you can see there in the white part of the screen and um, probably a little bit further down it, it's pretty close that's that's pretty close you could go to the, the top side of the eye or right in the center of the eye. I wouldn't go below that. Uh, something else I want to point out, this is the Rockport Rattler in their Beast version. It's a 5 aught. I'm using 5 aught hooks pretty much entirely. Um, but this is the Rockport Rattler Beast and it's actually already kind of pre-bent. Um, it's got a more aggressive bend here than I'm using, but it still has a good hookup ratio. This hook comes with a 1 8 ounce lead with the rattle already in the lead. The only thing I'm doing to this hook is I'm walking this lead piece down to the very back end so that I can have that weight back here and as much room for this hook to, uh, to open up when I set the hook. What I'm finding, and the reason this is working actually, is that um, these fish have it down in their gullet. And when you go to set the hook, what we're trying to do, when we jerk really hard to set the hook, that bait is rotating out like this. And, and what is happening is the fish has the plastic and you're pulling the hook this way. So it's gotta open up. These guys that are burying the hook in the plastic, all you're gonna do is get a lot of plastic that way. That's not gonna work. Same thing for the guys, the bass fishermen that I've found that are that are putting the hook in the hook slot. I tested this bait for hookup ratios with a hook slot on top and even fished with a prominent guide on Okeechobee and we tested it with the hook slot on top. It's doing the same thing. When you go to set the hook, that hook has to rotate to the side because it's downstream, it's down in the gullet. And if you rotate it to the side in a hook slot, a lot of times all you're doing is getting a lot of plastic and you're going to miss some fish that way. It still works a little, and if you choose to use a hook slot, if you like a hook slot, uh, that's something you can test out. So that's the uh, Rockport Rattler. Uh, Mustad has a, a pretty good hook um, that I've tried also. Uh, same deal, you're going to have to shape it as well. I'm just grabbing these. Uh, uh, the Mustad I like because it's got a really big gap in here between the hook. It's the only 4 out out I would consider. And uh, bent that one a little more aggressively. I'm going to open it back up just a little bit. There you go. Now, the thing between the push pin style hooks like this Mustad is and the uh, trocars or owners that have the spring type keepers. Here's what I found with that. The push pin actually has a better hookup ratio because it'll pop out of the bait when you go to set the hook and rotate out. But what's happening is I'm only getting about two to three fish per bait on that. The spring keeper uh, I'm finding that um, while it's got a slightly lower hookup ratio, I'm getting s about six to seven fish per bait. So maybe if I'm a tournament guy, I might use the push pin and go through more baits. But if I'm a weekend angler or I'm a tournament guy fishing on weekends and I don't really care, I'll probably use a spring keeper. Um, my trocar, I'm rigging with spring keepers. Another thing, these um, EWGs that have weights on them. I designed my bait with the mass in the bait. It's a quarter ounce with the hook in the bait with no weight. It casts super great without any weight on it at all. If you feel like you want to weight, maybe you want to cast into the wind, um, which this bait will do really good, you can get some of these owners or the, um, or the Gamagatsu or Mustad. Mustad has a good spring keeper with a weight, a 1 8 ounce weight or a 16 ounce weight back here. Um, the only thing I'm doing is I'm wiggling this 
weight to the back end back here right before the bend of the hook. Um, the only other thing with the mustads, I'm sorry, the owner twist locks, is you want to make sure you get the the 5132. It's got a bigger throat than the 5167. So that's a key point on, on those hooks. The, the 5167 has less throat right here, uh, less gap. Um, but that's my personal opinion. Twist lock, owner twist lock makes a really good hook. Something else I want to point out. These are the owner twist locks. And you can buy these in a large version. Let's see if you can tell the difference on these two. This is the medium version that comes on most of the owners. And this is the large version that comes that you can buy. Bass Pro Shops has these. You can buy these. They are patented by, by owners, so uh, you have to buy them directly from them. Um, something that I'm doing with the medium size that comes on the stock owner I'm gonna have to put my glasses on for this one here you guys put your glasses on what I'm doing with these little medium sized owner twist locks this centering pin in here on these smaller ones will core out a bait pretty fast so I'm getting some extra fish per bait on it I'm taking a set of wire cutters that I can get in there with and right around in the first ring I'm reaching in there and I'm clipping well that's not the way I wanted that to go <laughs> you want to make sure you don't hit the spring you want to you want to crab and uh, cut that centering pin <laughs> a little blooper is always good, right guys? So this one's going to cut out the centering pin and um, not the actual spring. So there we go. So a little bit short of the, the top up in there, I cut the centering pin shorter. And it's going to rig pretty much the same... And uh, it's not going to core out the bait. That's the owner twist lock. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going ahead and with these owners, they center really nicely and they're not off to the side. You can run that bait right up to the, to the actual eye of the hook. Now, different one item here. Let me see if I have an extra hook. Uh, this is a trocar. This is the trocar spring keeper. And they're fine. But these big owner twist locks in the large, they go on really fast and they won't break off or anything. They, you just uh, take the spring and go into, take the spring and go into the eye of the hook and it runs right around. The next thing you know, you got that sucker on there straight like that. It is big. It'd be something really good for a frog as well as my bait. And you can leave the spring keeper in on the big one. You've got to be a little more nimble with this one since it is so big. You've got to be a little more precise. Make sure it's in the middle. There you go. I've got it run up all the way to the top there. And uh, I did not shape this trocar. I'm going to show you what the difference is between the shaping and unshaped. So that's the unshaped trocar. It's just not designed for this. You're just going to catch some grass like that. Um, and that's why I like to shape it. It's a good hook. Good, real sturdy hook and great hook point. Uh, something else I wanted to cover on this some guys asked about putting some flavor on these baits one of the things about the tail of this bait is you can put some chicken boy butt juice on this this is uh, actually uh, pro cure but uh, I love chicken boy he makes great baits a little shout out to chicken boy 
uh, and you can actually put this grind this butt juice into the bait tail and that's gonna stay in there as well as you could actually shoot some butt juice up into the slot how about that guys some guys have asked what am I using a jig head with this thing well guys I really didn't design to be fished with a jig head you're gonna be fishing in areas um, where it's really grassy and you know it's really not gonna really, or, or really shallow moisture and um, you can use it with a jig head it's just not gonna have the action that's designed into the bait and it's designed to actually be fished shallow so you can rig it on a jig head this is a bad marine from bad marine supply and it looks fine and it'll catch fish but it's really not designed for this you're gonna be wanting to fish this bait in some shallow oyster or some um, shallow grass floating grass widging grass in the marsh things like that uh, but you can do it and finally guys a lot of guys are asking me well what rod action are you using for this bait I'm throwing a lose team lose light custom it's actually made to go with the team lose light reel and it's a uh, topwater jerk bait this is a medium light fast action I think you could throw any rod in this category uh, medium light medium the baits got enough weight to it that you could throw any rod so if you're looking for an excuse to get a new rod you actually don't need one from me um, super great heavy enough bait to throw on any action rod unless you've got a you know an old cane pole with a red reel or something then we might need to talk but um, that's pretty much it I, I see I've had some questions I'm not sure if I'm able to um, Max said you can slide a 1 16th drop shank weight make it uh, drop horizontally when you pause it for a little different action uh, yeah that's right Tino I didn't mean to cut the spring in half just the centering pin that was fun we all need a blooper right Yeah, that's another good point, Tino. Um, glass rattle. I actually brought a glass rattle out here. Um, you can add a glass rattle to this bait. In fact, I designed this to be made into here. You've got the hook slot on the bottom side of the bait. And here I'm using a little coring tool. It's just a little tool, um, a small aluminum, uh, small aluminum tube or brass tube from a hobby store would work fine. Push that to the back wall of the hook slot and core you out a nice little spot all the way to the tail. I've got Chicken Boy's butt juice on my hands. Yeah, that didn't sound right. <laughs> so after that's cored out, you can, um, as Mac used to say, put that rattle up in the bunghole but uh, this is a cord out section so it's going to take a little bit of work and actually I would advise if you're going to do this to go ahead and have some crazy glue handy or something of the sort Gorilla Glue works good Gorilla Super Glue and go ahead and glue that rattle up into the slot now I didn't do this one accurately because um, it's now sticking out the back <laughs> We won't show you that, but we talked about it, right? So um, there's enough room right here to actually be able to put that rattle in this section. And I'm using a, about a two millimeter, two ball bearing rattle. And um, that's it. That's a plenty good rattle. Something else about the rattle being in the back end of the bait is it actually adds a little bit of balancing weight and helps it sink a little more uh, level. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up by uh, showing all four colors together. We've got uh, the Bone Diamond Glow, and this actually the glow, the top of it does glow in the dark for snook fishermen that love that, um, or if you want to geek out at night with it on a flat. 
We've got the Houdini, and that's also really looking like a nice baby bass color. And I've caught some bass in it at the prototyping tank. Uh, we've got the a golden roach. What this is is a uh, golden brim bottom with a smoke black glitter top in the top here. So if you hold it up to the light, you'll see that it um, it's a little transparent on top. We've got the good chartreuse tail. And, of course, we've got... Um, the chicken on the chain so guys I hope that helped and I'll be putting this up on YouTube later today and um, if you have any of your questions hit me up on YouTube send me an email I think we've covered it all good luck good fishing I hope you like it as much as I do it solves a lot of issues we've all been dealing with uh, uh, a weedless bait that you can cast weightless and be able to make long cast be able to make cast quartering into the wind if you want to be able to fish that wind driven current be able to fish shallow oyster or be able to skip it under docks or under mangroves and I hope you like it hit me up on Facebook messenger or email me your questions